Hey guys, welcome back. So, part two of our multi-part series. I'm a 6S Typhon. We've had our video one, which hopefully you've watched. If you haven't, head on back now and watch that video to get a bit of context on where we're taking this video. Um, but this video is gonna cover what we're gonna do to the car. So, we're gonna make uh, some upgrades essentially, get this car a little bit more uh, race ready for the track. Um, how are we gonna do that? So, we have got ourselves some tires. Now, I've taken the rim off this one. They are uh, a set that will glue ourselves onto some Team Lacy Racing rims. You can buy these in pre glutes It is uh, called a Proline Blockade uh, in a soft compound. So this is a race tread pattern that'll work really well on, on most race tracks. It'll work well on our track here at Southern District. So we've decided to go with a set of these. We are gonna do the shock oil as well. Now this car, um, just noticing filling it on the bench, it is oversprung and underdamped. So what that means is springs are pretty stiff, the oil is a little bit too thin, too soft. So the car, when you push it back down, comes back up really quickly, which means that actually in the slow motion uh, footage that we saw on the track, you could see it land the jumps and then springs and almost bounces back off the ground. Makes it uh, a little bit harder to jump. When you land jumps, the car's not as collected and uh, easy to control. So we're gonna change the shock oil. Now, this is a really, really cheap way to do it. Shock oil is about six, seven bucks a bottle. Um, the bottle will fill actually, you probably do six or seven shock absorbers on one bottle. We've got some uh, Team Lucy Racing 40 weight and 45 weight. So the, the number um, is how oh, thick the oil is essentially. So 45 weight's a bit thicker than 40 weight. I'm gonna put 45 in the front. I'm gonna put 40 weight in the rear. So we're gonna do that. And then while I'm in there, I'm gonna have a look at the shock pistons. Now these would be a bit difficult for you to see, but these actually come with the car. So in the box of the Typhon, uh, Armour nicely gives you a few sets of shock pistons. What these are, I'll get one out. A little bit difficult to see, um, but they're essentially uh, a round plastic uh, insert that goes over the shock shaft with a bunch of holes in it. Now, the size of the hole and the amount of holes is really important for the dampening of the car. Now, just from feeling this, it feels like they've got smaller holes in the front and bigger holes in the rear. I'm gonna have a look at what's in the car, change them over to what they've included, which is an eight hole by 1.3 millimeter hole, and they're designated with a, a one three on the piston. So, they're included with the car. They are a free upgrade. We're gonna put them in and the shock hole. And lastly, we're gonna do some measurement settings. So we're gonna do the uh, toe, we're gonna do the ride height with a ride height gauge, we're gonna do the camber with a camber gauge. Um, these are really simple, again, need a gauge. If you didn't have a uh, camber gauge, you could use anything, a right angle, you can even use a can of drink just to give you a little bit of camber. The can of drink's obviously gonna give you a zero position, we wanna lean the, the wheel over by one or two degrees. So we're gonna do that. At the right height gauge, you could use a ruler as well. So we're just measuring from the bottom of the chassis to the table. Um, so you could use a ruler on the side of the car to measure this. Now, uh, just for interest's sake, I did measure it. Um, as it sits, I haven't changed it. Uh, normally we run race cars at between kind of 27 millimeters is a good baseline. Uh, this car in the rear is 43 millimeters which is very high. And in the front, we're looking at 38 millimeters. So the car out of the box has the spring collars cranked down. It is significantly higher than what we'd run a race car, which means the center of gravity is a lot higher, which means the car is gonna have a tendency to wanna to sort of tip over. So um, we're gonna fix that up. That's nice and easy to change. So with all that being said, stay tuned, watch along. Gonna do some work, I'm gonna make this uh, accelerated. Watch through our work, we might stop at intervals as well and, and talk about some stuff. But um, before I do get started, uh, what I'm gonna do, whilst we're doing this uh, upgrades, and after our first run, our shakedown run, it's a great time to go through the car and check the screws. So uh, take a two mil, two and a half mil driver, we'll do most of the screws in this car, check they're all tight. It's a good thing to do on a new car after you've had your first run or two. Um, check all the screws and make sure they're tight. So let's not waste any more time and let's get straight into it. Need the coffee for energy.
But what I will say, uh, for getting the caps off the shocks, they're just screwed on there. At the top of the shock absorber, there is a, um, like a, a, a flat section that you can grab with a, like a spanner. It's like an open-ended spanner would be fine, or a shifter. So on this, I'm gonna open that up. And uh, it is approximately, get that here. It's about uh, 23 mil. So I can put that on the top, put a screwdriver through the, the edge here. We should just be able to undo that. Once we get it cracked loose, take that. Excellent. I'm gonna use a, a shock shaft ply here. These are a set by Dynamite that, uh, that we stock and carry. Really, really nice. It allows you to hold the shock shaft without scoring and scratching it. Um, I understand not everyone's gonna have these in their toolkit. <laughs> Smash everything while I'm talking about it. Um, not everyone's gonna have these in their toolkit. That is okay. Um, you could use a set of normal pliers and then use a rag or some uh, paper towel to protect the shaft from getting from getting nicked and cut. We don't want to scratch and damage the shock shaft. That'll obviously cause some damage to the O-rings inside and potentially allow oil to leak out. So um, either get yourself a, a nice pair of shock shaft pliers uh, or a bit of paper towel, a bit of rag and some uh, pliers, hopefully with uh, not too sharp knurlings on them. And that'll work great here. Okay, so I've got the uh, rear shocks apart. In hindsight, actually, the car has 1.2 by eight in the front and 1.4 millimeter by eight in the rear. The 1.4 is the size of the hole, so it's a 1.4 millimeter hole. Um, because the rear was a bit bit soft, I'm gonna change the rear piston. I'm gonna leave the front. I'm gonna actually change the rears to be the same as the front. So armor are nice enough to give you uh, 1.2 pistons. So we're gonna find those and change them out. It's just a matter of unscrewing them off the shaft. Little washer goes underneath the piston. Piston goes on the shaft and then it's a five millimeter nut that goes on. So you just hold the shaft, do the nut up. Don't wanna do it too tight. Do it till it still, uh, still spins um, and then you're good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. A nice thing about the shock oil uh, from Team Losey Racing, not only is it high quality silicon oil uh, that is widely used across a multitude of racing classes, um, they measure their oil in weight. But weight's kind of not really the correct measurement um, when talking universally about oil. Weight differs between brand and manufacturer. But CF CST or Center Stoke is the correct measurement. So what Team Losey Racing have done <clears throat> is include the weight and the CST on the top of the cap. So I know that the Armour Typhon 6S comes with 550 CST out of the box, front and rear. Obviously it's got the smaller pistons in the front and the bigger pistons in the rear, which is why you get a bit of the disparity on springiness. Um, <clears throat> but I can see here that we're gonna go with uh, 40 weight in the rear, which is uh, 516, so a little bit softer, but a much smaller piston. I'm gonna go with 45 in the front, which is 610. It's a little bit stiffer in the front. And that hopefully should give us the uh, the balance that we're looking for on the track. So what I'm gonna do here is put the rear shocks shafts back in the shock body. Um, and before I do that, I'm just gonna drip a little bit of oil down into the shock. Now this uh, helps when putting the shaft back through, a little bit of oil helps uh, to stop the O-rings from getting damaged at all and getting nicked. So a bit of oil through there, it slides in much nicer. Do the same with the, uh, the other shock shaft, just a bit. Dribble some down there until it goes into the hole. Slide your shaft through, good to go. And there'll be no damaged O-rings so that we don't have any leakage. We go ahead and chuck these back together. neat little thing you can do uh, when filling these shocks up we're going to want to wait for the air bubbles to all come out uh, so what we're going to do 
these are the rear shocks. We're going to chuck our 40 weight in there. So we're going to fill it up. We're going to do, it's almost to the top there. Just going to uh, move the shaft up and down. Let's get rid of any of the air that's stuck below the piston. And you'll see bubbles coming through. What you can do with the rims, turn the bottom one uh, upside down. And then uh, the hole in the middle of the rim actually holds the shock body really well while the uh, air comes out from underneath the piston. So while we're waiting, we don't have to hold it. The rim can do the work for us. So with building these shocks, uh, <clears throat> it is important that we don't overfill the shock with oil. So you can get a nice um, concave shape on the top of the oil. Don't have it all the way to the top, just below the sides. Um, and then what we're going to do is put the cap on. Now you'll see inside the cap there's a bladder. There's a bladder shock. Uh, and then there is actually a hole in the shock cap. This allows the excess oil to escape. So what we're going to do is we're going to start threading this on. You will see some oil come out there if you've... Uh, overfilled it or like I have it's about right a little bit you want a little bit more oil so you can bleed the, the excess out so oil will come out of that hole now what we're going to do is we're going to slowly push the shaft up I'm going to build these with zero rebound so shaft all the way up and then we're going to hold it up as we do the cap up uh, right to its fully done up state perfect and we get a bit of spillage but that's okay Better to have a little bit spill out than not put enough in. Okay, now that we've got the shocks uh, rebuilt with some uh, different viscosity oil, changed the pistons in the rear, time to chuck them back on the car. Uh, the way Armour secures their shocks is actually super neat, really easy to use. The bottom shock uses a, so at the bottom it uses a pin, which just has a screw from the other side that retains it, and just a nut at the top. So I'm gonna chuck these back on, uh, then we need to get our tires done and on, then we can do some settings, and then, then we're almost ready to go hit the track. Okay, so that finishes off the shock absorbers. Um, what we're gonna do now is glue up some tires, the Proline blockades and the soft compound. I'm gonna chuck some glue on these, get them onto the car, then we can do our bench settings, and then we're good to go. say before I put this last rim uh, into the tire here is that when you are gluing your own tires uh, a good quality super glue is really important we use the much more CA which is a thin you can also get a medium or a thicker uh, glue if you prefer that to the thin stuff um, and then also cleaning the bed of the tire is really important they use a bit of a mold release every brand is slightly different but um, most brands have a, a mold release of some description left on the bead which can make the tires come off if you don't clean it. So uh, a simple green or a brake cleaner, anything like that on a rag, just clean up the bead uh, and I find it to work quite well. Um, you can also do the same with the rim, although I don't really see many issues with the rim. So I just clean my, my bead, chuck it together and um, yeah, you're good to go. I 
mentioned before about checking over the car for loose screws, kind of just highlighted there. So just checking through the front end really quickly. One side, the Ackerman link was really, really tight. The other side, the screws had just started to slip. So when you do get your first run in, the vibration, the movement, some of the screws come back out, it's a really good time to take a chance, go through the car, check it over because five minutes, or maybe not even, of checking through the car and uh, making sure the screws are all done up tight will save you going out for a run, having something fall off and sort of ending your fun early. So uh, these tires are just about to dry. Chuck them on the car and then we'll uh, get some settings in. And um, yeah, then we're ready to go. Well, we've finally finished all of the uh, work on the car. So the only thing that's left to do before we go back down and hit the track is uh, to check our ride height, check our camber, and maybe we'll go through the costing of the upgrades that we've done today. So we've done our shock oil, we've done our pistons, we have got our set of racing tires on the car, uh, we need to set our ride height, we need to check our camber. So as we mentioned at the start of the video, the ride height was very high. And now we've got a battery in the car. The car is ready to hit the track, which is how you need it to check ride height. You need it to be ready to go with everything inside of it. Uh, so that the car's the exact same weight it's gonna be when you're driving. And we'll go ahead and check this. So like I said before, if you didn't have a ride height gauge, you can use a ruler. All we're doing is measuring from the table to the bottom of the chassis and making sure that it is uh, correct. So uh, setting this, we wanna set it to approximately 28, I would say is a good place for us to start. So we'll push the car down. Measure, I'm a little bit off now. I've done some a little bit of adjustment on these while I was doing the shocks because they were way out before. So that's 28 now. Perfect, a little bit more. And the back end will do as well. Perfect, so that needs a little bit of adjustments. Excellent. That is our raw height set. Now we can check our camber. Now what we want is about negative two degrees. So what we're gonna do, put the car on the ground, push it down, and then we're gonna use our camber gauge, which again, if you didn't have this, you could use anything that was square. So a right angle would be fine. Uh, like I said, you could even use like a can of, a can of drink uh, just to give you a, a zero position. And we wanna have the wheel leaning over a bit. So for you guys who are going out and racing, it's not terribly important. You don't need to have a gauge to have it down exactly correct. I mean, there's always a bit of slop in wheels and things like that. But it is important that you do have negative camber, not positive camber. So negative camber means it's leaning away. Um, so it's important that we have that. So this car here, the back end, I've already adjusted. It is two degrees. And the front end on these cars are actually preset. So that it's also two degrees. That's perfect. If we do need to make an adjustment, we need to increase camber, something like a little camber tool or a little spanner is fantastic. Gets on the uh, on the flat spots on the tie rod there and you can adjust it and change your camber. And then the other thing to, to set is our toe, which I have already done. So we wanna have about one degree out of toe. Toe is the angle of the front wheels pointing in and out. So we want toe out. Um, we've got about one degree on this car. So that kind of brings us to the end of the settings. Um, we're ready to hit the track. So for the upgrades that we've done today, a lot of the cost is actually the tires. Um, the good thing about these tires and about the track we're racing on is that the tire wear is really, really good. So we would get uh, a very long time out of these tires on that track, so it's a, in, a very good investment. I guess we'll see how much faster the car is with them on, um, but I'm positive it's gonna be a fair bit quicker. The shock oil is seven bucks a bottle. We use a bottle, a bottle for the front and bottle for the rear. Still got plenty of leftover, so we could rebuild these again if we need to. We're gonna refresh them in the future. Uh, tires are 37 bucks a pair, and then the rims are $26 for a set of four. The glue is 12 bucks. So the total costing today for everything that we've done is $125. Like I said, a lot of that's in the tires. So um, yeah, but you get good, I mean, good life and good wear out of those. So we're ready to hit the track and see what this car can now do now that it's in uh, race trim. Gonna go see if we can get anywhere near that fast track record of lap time and uh, see if we can improve on our previous lap time that we set with the box stock car. So tune in for the next video. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.